Guys, Southeast Saltwash, we're up here in Sonoya, Georgia. We've actually done a bunch of roofs in this particular subdivision over the last two years. We did that roof, we've done that roof, we've done a couple more down this street. So we got a call yesterday to come back out for this homeowner. They had kept our jumbo postcard from actually two years ago when we were out advertising. Gave us a call, we're out here to do this roof today. And I wanted to try to make a video. I've done this before and a lot of times it just doesn't work out. I don't get good video quality. And today we've got landscapers next door uh, just exactly at the same time I'm trying to shoot a video, but you know, they got to work too. So hopefully the audio will be good and uh, we're going to walk you through how to clean a roof. Now this isn't every single detail. We're just going to hit the highlights of what you want to do. Uh, there's some, some things I'm sure I'll forget and won't cover, but we just got here about five minutes ago, so we've done nothing except park the truck and uh, let's let's go down to the truck and take a look at some of the very first things that you want to do when you get on site so all right so when you get on site and you arrive to the job the first thing you need to do is just communicate with the homeowner obviously let them know you're there and you're about to get started have that conversation uh, any administrative things you need to talk about you know payment terms uh, whatever that you need to communicate to the homeowner do that first the second thing and actually the first part of the job itself I like to do a walk around around the house what we're looking for is any damaged landscaping that may be already damaged. So these bushes here, we're going to take a look at our downspouts. Uh, obviously, we've got a Japanese maple right there, so we're going to make note of that. We're just looking for any issues that may come up in the wash process, looking at where the gutters flow, uh, where the downspouts headed to, are there any sensitive vegetation, and are there any plant life? Is there any plant life around the house that's already damaged? So sometimes you'll have something that's a little puny. The homeowner doesn't notice it until you come and do a wonderful job cleaning their house and then they start looking uh, and they may say hey you damaged this plant when in fact it was already damaged so i'll take my phone there and i will just take a photo of anything that we see uh, around the house plant wise that is already damaged obviously also damage to the house itself uh, any kind of damaged shingles that you see Make a note of that on the front end. I'll put them all in a text and shoot them to the homeowner before I start the job. And I'll say, hey, just letting you know before we get started that I saw these you know, little issues on your shrubbery just so that you know that we did not cause that uh, and that'll save your butt in the long run. Let's walk down here to the truck. All right, so now that we've got all that stuff out of the way, we're gonna actually start the wash process. Uh, thing number one we're gonna do is locate a spigot and a hose to supply the truck with water. Now your setup may not be exactly like ours. We've got the truck set up so that we feed water into the truck and then with a selector dial, we can send it back out to the green hose there, which is our rinse hose. You may just be hooking straight to the house for your rinsing and that's fine as well. Uh, but you need to locate that initial water source and see where you're gonna set your hose up at for rinsing. The second thing we're gonna do, come over here, we'll walk around to the other side. So here's our soft wash line. Now let's go around and set up our ratios to actually do the roof cleaning. Here's the soft wash side of our truck. So we've got our pump, we've got our switch, it's already on, and we've got our blend manifold. And if you're using the proportioner, it'll do the same thing, just looks a little different. If you're batch mixing, obviously you'll have your batch already pre-mixed before you get on site. But if you're using any type of blendable system, this is what you're gonna do. We've got our water wide open, we're gonna set our our surfactant knob where I want it. Now this varies, don't get hung up on the numbers. Each job is different. The pitch of the roof is gonna determine how much surfactant I need to use to make it stick a little more. If it's a really steep roof, I may open this up all the way. If it's really, really soiled, uh, I may open it up a little more. Right now I'm gonna be about halfway open on surfactant and that's just trial and error, guys. You're gonna have to do it and see how you like it. And then SH, we don't need uh, a full strength mix today. This job's not terrible and it's a good warm day, so it's gonna allow us to use a slightly less uh, potent strength on our SH mix. So if we were to open this valve all the way up to five, that would be a 6% mix, we don't need that. We're gonna be back down around four on our dial. So now we've got, with these dials, a roof cleaning strength set on our dials. So let's come back around here and we'll go to the uh, front of the house. All right, so now we've got our ladder set up on a good level location. Ladder safety is one of the biggest concerns you have in this industry, going up and down ladders. The chances of you really getting hurt doing this, this type of industry soft washing are pretty slim, but ladders is one of your key points where you may, you may wind up hurting yourself one day. So make sure you've got a good place to put your ladder. 
extend your rung up over the gutter. Now I'm probably gonna move this one around because I don't like the way it's sitting right there on that gutter, but just find a good stable spot. Make sure that it's to your liking. And that's one reason that I like a two-man crew. I got somebody else there to hold the ladder while I'm going up and if something were to happen, he's there and he can, you know, get me to the hospital or call 911 or most of the time it's just going to be embarrassed, but uh, ladders are a, a point of failure here. One other thing to watch for ladders is overhead lines. So when you're carrying this thing around, if you bump into some electrical lines, you're going to have a fun day, especially with an aluminum ladder. So another thing to do, just in this initial setup phase, look at this sidewalk here. This sidewalk will take us about 10 minutes to clean with our surface cleaner. And we're gonna use the opportunities like that of things the homeowner may have as an upsell. So I've already talked to her about this. I said, hey, if you're interested, we can clean this sidewalk for you while we're here. We'll do it really cheap. Um, I don't try to upcharge a lot. You do whatever you wanna do, this is your business, but uh, I try to pass on some savings and we'll knock this sidewalk out for, for you know, 40 bucks, something like that. And it'll literally take longer to set the pressure washer up than it will be to clean it. And the sidewalks are easy money and that just gives the, the homeowner uh, another feather in their hat for your company. So look for things you can upsell, right? Gutter brightening, uh, does the house need to be washed? Is there a dirty sidewalk right there that you can mention to the customer while you're there? Always be looking for the upsell. The homeowner's got lots of things that they need to be cleaned. And it's not that you're trying to get one over on them. It's a legitimate thing they need done and you're the guy to do it. So always be looking for those. So we'll set our ladder up and now we're gonna get up on the roof and actually spray. Now, typically we don't get on roofs. If you pan around and look at these houses around us, most of these would not be roofs that we would be getting up on. Uh, we try to spray about 80% of our jobs from the ladder. This particular house is one story, it's not steep, and it's got this porch area that's really shallow. So it's just gonna be easier for me to get up there and walk around on the porch. Um, pretty much no safety concern at all. The proper way to do it would be to harness up and do all that stuff. Guys, you all know that we don't always do that. Now, if I was gonna get on something crazy, I would probably get a harness. So you make that call. I'm not telling you what to do in your business, but we usually just try to do it from the ladder. That keeps me from having to fool with the harness in the first place. And with a good soft wash system, you've got about 40 feet of distance that you can spray. So typically that's gonna be fine. Another point of concern for safety is on a hot summer day, breathing in SH fumes. So Amazon has some masks. You can do some Googling and find out which masks work well for this. Um, in cooler weather, it's not that big of a deal. Still a good idea, wear a mask. If you're up there spraying and that bleach, that SH is becoming a gas, you're breathing that in. It's not good for you. So just do your homework on safety stuff, but um, you wanna do a good job. You wanna live long, so you don't wanna die doing this. But we'll get set up. Uh, we'll be right back. We're gonna pause the video and we'll come right back to you with a coat on the roof. Guys, so one of the first things we do as we're actually getting started washing, uh, we're gonna usually pre-wet all the surrounding landscaping, especially when it's hot in the summer, which is your peak season. Most of the time when you're doing roof cleaning, it's gonna be in a warm weather month. So we're in a little bit of a drought right now and all of these shrubs are very thirsty. So if SH gets on them, they're gonna soak it up. So one way we can prevent any possible damage to the landscaping is just to pre-wet the bushes. Now, if we're controlled with our application technique, very little, if any at all, should get on these shrubs. When we do the very outside edges of that gable, a little overspray may come over. So we're gonna pre-wet them down, just try to get a little bit of a barrier of water on them. Normally that's Dusty's job, the cameraman, but since he's filming me, I'll do it now. And again, we're making note of the Japanese maple there and the one here. Some certain plants are more sensitive, hydrangeas, roses, Japanese maples, anything with a, um, a delicate leaf like petunias, they're gonna be a little bit more sensitive. So these box hedges, they're pretty tough, but you still wanna wet them, rinse them off. Um, make sure you're taking care of the landscape and that's probably the biggest issue guys have with roof cleaning is landscape problems all of last year in 2018 we killed one bush um, and that was only because the homeowner told us he wasn't worried about this particular area that he was gonna redo it so we did the roof we didn't do any landscape mitigation over there and a bush died which I pretty much knew it would so the homeowner called me a couple weeks later hey this bush is dead 
Well, I think he played the system, but you know, one for the year is not bad. And the key to that is water. So you, the solution for pollution is always dilution. You can take care of almost all of your problems with just watering it down. All right, so now we're actually up on the roof. Like I said, we typically don't get on our roofs. We try to do everything from the ladder. But for the sake of doing this video, and this one's pretty shallow and it's one story, we'll hop up here and get you some footage. So you see behind me here on this pitch, we've got a lot of gliocaps and magma roof stains. We do this every day, it's easy. When you first start out, you're gonna kind of be like, is that even gonna come off? Yes, it will. Uh, there's a little bit of a technique to spray in a roof. And what we're trying to do here is get the shingle coated without creating any excessive uh, runoff. So just spraying it enough to get the, the shingle saturated with as little runoff as possible. One thing I do like to do is paint my edges first. That way I'm not standing back at this angle and shooting that edge. That's gonna create a lot of overspray. So I'll get down here carefully and I will spray a fan spray, but I'm gonna turn vertically. Okay. So all I did was I turned my wand vertically and I painted that edge. Uh, and then I'm not gonna be shooting a bunch of overspray. Now, now that we've got that done, we'll start at the bottom here. And that's what we're looking for. Just getting the shingles wet. That, that's it, okay? So one problem I see, and we've, we've coached and trained a lot of companies and watching other videos and stuff, is uh, a lot of people are trying to coat the whole roof on a pencil stream. So if I adjust this tip down to get my my pencil stream like that, that's my distance shot. But I don't want to coat the whole roof with that because I'm using way much more uh, mix. You see how much runoff came down just from that one second shot. I'm getting less square footage per second of spray time. So with that fan spray, I'm maximizing my SH, which is more efficient for me. I'm gonna save money in the long run by making that barrel of SH last me longer. And I'm reducing problems or potential problems with runoff because the less runoff you create, the less you have to manage on the ground level. So you just wanna make sure you wet them uh, and get everything coated without overdoing it. <laughs> Once you spray that section, Another problem that people have is it takes it a minute to do its work, okay? So we're gonna let that sit about 20 minutes. We're just gonna keep coating the rest of the roof. But a potential problem you may have, you keep seeing these stains here, especially if you've got good polarized lenses. And the temptation is, I keep seeing that stain, I wanna keep spraying it. As long as the shingle's wet, it's doing its work. And that's where that surfactant comes into play. It keeps the SH on that spot and allows it to keep killing that gliocaps and magma. As long as it's wet, it's working. If I keep spraying it, basically I'm pouring water into a bucket that's already full. I'm just creating more runoff. So spray it and move on, right? Come back in 20 minutes, 30 minutes at the most, and by that point, you'll be able to tell if you need to recoat any areas. But don't just keep spraying it just to be spraying it. Okay guys, so we've got a coat on the entirety of the roof, and while I was doing that, he was down here rinsing everything. Can't say enough about rinsing your vegetation off. You really want to make sure you do that. Another, uh, just a quick tip, come over here and look. They've got a downspout here, and they've got, I don't know if you guys can see it, but right back in here is one of those diverters that you usually see under the downspout. Now what Dusty has done is scooted that away from the downspout just a couple of inches so that you can actually see the runoff, so that that runoff doesn't hit this diverter and go straight to this bush. We'd rather it flood the dirt back here because that's uh, you know, about two and a half feet of dirt that it's gonna have to soak through before it ever gets to the bush. So we'll scoot those things out when we get to the job site and that just keeps that runoff further back up closer to the house instead of out by the landscaping. And we're still probably gonna put a little water on that as well. Let's go up here and we'll show you one other little thing. So they've got this corrugated pipe here. And if we follow that back, that it's actually tied into this downspout here. So one of the things that we'll do is we'll take our little rinse bar, we'll take the tip off. You could do this with just the actual hose itself. And we will 
and tuck it in here just like that and cut it on about halfway. And we're gonna throw some water down that corrugated pipe. Sometimes these pipes will have holes in it so that that rain runoff is watering these shrubs. Sometimes they're solid all the way out to the end. If they're solid, we're gonna see a lot more runoff coming out than we are. So I'm suspecting that buried beneath this pine straw, uh, these are actually drainaged. So they're feeding these bushes when it rains, which is not good for us. So we're gonna fix that by just flooding the, uh, the corrugated line there with some water so that any SH that has gotten into that pipe, we're gonna wash it down. And we could do the same thing by placing that up in the tray of the gutter itself and uh, diluting it from that point. But just find you a spot somewhere in their, their gutter system that you can add water and make sure you're diluting all of your runoff. All right, we're pretty much done with the roof. Um, if we take out the time we spent making the video, that took us about an hour and 10 minutes to clean that roof. So that's pretty good money, guys. Uh, hard pressed to find another industry where you can make $500 an hour. So the last step in this job is to come back to the valves. We're gonna cut our surfactant and our SH lines off and then we're gonna flush the pump out. It's key to making your pumps last a long time. It's just keeping them flushed out. So I've already flushed this one out, so this is just water. But what you wanna do is find you somewhere in the lawn that it doesn't matter, a big pine straw bed, the edge of the woods. Uh, if you don't have a good spot, you can actually recirculate it back into your SH tank. Just drop it in there and purge the line. And we've got 200 feet of line on ours. With that five and a half gallon a minute pump it takes about 45 seconds to cycle through the line so once i've sprayed 45 seconds now i'm spraying water because that's the only valve that's still open and i'll usually run it on just water for about you know four or five minutes so uh, you can also just take this head off and run it that way which will allow a little bit more flow um, i'm a stickler for rinsing my pump out i try to make them last as long as possible we'll go through maybe three pumps a year, which is not too bad. They're about 140 bucks. So, you know, it's a small price to pay a couple times a year. Any system you get is gonna require maintenance. The electric pumps work very well. They're efficient. Obviously we just did this job in, in an hour or so. And uh, we will roll this hose up, cut our switch off. Don't forget to cut your switch off. And we're done, that's a wrap. Uh, so the only other thing would be to go get the check from the homeowner and talk to them. One final thing to do with them is just to uh, try to get them to leave you a review. I found that sending them a direct link to your Facebook page or your Google page, it does help. Um, lots of people just aren't going to remember to give you a review, but if you ask every single customer, your chances of getting a good review go up. We've got about 71 uh, five-star reviews and one bad review. So. You're gonna always have some bad ones, but try your best with every job to make sure they're happy, make sure they're satisfied, and then see if they'll give you a review on the back end. I think that's pretty much it, guys. That's a roof cleaning, start to finish. I'm not thinking that I forgot anything. Uh, so we'll get the ladder, we're gonna wash that sidewalk for her, and uh, we'll be out of here.